so um, we want to figure out what is the unemployment rate that maximizes output. And so um, the way you need to think about it is um, um, think that there is what we call a social planner. So we take the perspective of a social planner. Um, So the social planner is like a, basically a government that can do uh, whatever it wants on the labor market. So in particular, here that means that um, it's a, you know, a government that can allocate workers as it wants between employment, you know, unemployment, and you know, in employment you can also like put workers who are producers, workers who are recruiters. Okay? So social planner, like think about it as some godlike creatures that can just allocate people anywhere it wants in the economy uh, and, or, and with a goal, it's a benevolent creature and its goal is to uh, maximize uh, social welfare. Okay? So we'll take this perspective. Um, so the social planner is uh, it's like a government well, I should say it's a benevolent government that um, can allocate workers between. So, I mean, here, you know, people can only do three things. So, between unemployment. Employment, but employment is uh, composed of two possible tasks, producing, and the last task is recruiting. In order to uh, maximize our welfare. And uh, <coughs> so we take that perspective. Uh, and Welfare, we said, was determined by output. So really, what the um, social planner is trying to do is to allocate workers between these three tasks, unemployment, producing, recruiting, in order to maximize uh, output. Okay? And uh, so <coughs> that's how we have to think. Okay? And what are the constraints faced by the social planner? Well, there is only one constraint, is that the social planner is not able, you know, it cannot solve the matching uh, friction on the labor market. The, the social planner has to respect the structure of the labor market. Okay, so it's still true that if the social planner wants to put people into work, the social planner has to post vacancies, and these vacancies require recruiters. So the matching function, the recruiting process. And the production function, all these things are still there. So the, the technology uh, is not changed by the social planner. The way the economy operates is not changed by the social planner. But it's just that the social planner can decide, uh, can make all other decisions there. Okay? Uh, the social planner is um, subject, if you want, to the matching function, the production function. So you can't change as a social planner, you can make decisions. So for instance, you can decide how many vacancies you want to be posted, <coughs> uh, but you cannot change how things operate. Okay, You cannot change the general environment in which you operate. So the matching function still is the production function is still the same. Uh, you know the kind of recruiting process is still the same. Uh, but so here essentially, what does the social panel do? So the matching function remains, production function remains. What is the key choice that the social planner can do? Well, in this, because this model is so simple, the only really key thing that can be decided is the number of vacancies to be posted, you know. Because 
workers are pretty passive. They search for jobs and they get a job. They work when they're in the firm, they are allocated to a particular policy, but they don't really decide anything. Firms in the market are the only one who decide stuff. And the only thing they really decide is how many vacancies to post. And that imposes a, to allocate a certain number of recruiters to that task. And then once you have vacancy, you find workers and the, the guys who are not recruiters are going to be producers. So the key decision in the model is how many vacancies to post. And here, in this perspective we are taking, the perspective of social planner, um, we're going to take that perspective to figure out what is efficient unemployment. The unemployment that maximizes uh, social welfare, because that is the unemployment rate that the social planner would choose. Um, right, so it's as if, you know, uh, the decision of vacancy now is going to be made by the social planner. The social planner is going to pick the number of vacancies and to maximize uh, output basically because output is the same as welfare. So that's the key kind of decision that has to be made. But picking vacancies, you know, once you pick vacancies, that's going to determine tightness, that's going to determine you know, unemployment. Here there is really only one decision. So you know this is exactly the same as picking uh, you know, tightness to maximize output. I'm, I'm bringing tightness in because uh, we know that it's very easy to express all variables in the model as a function of tightness. So it's going to be much easier to think of the social planner as picking tightness instead of vacancies. It's just much more natural. But in the background, you have to know that the only really thing that can be decided is how many vacancies are possible. Once you de decide that, you know, you're going to decide how much unemployment there is, how much tightness there is. Like all these things are linked one to one. Uh, okay, so let's take the perspective of the social planner. Uh, so basically, now, under that perspective, the efficient unemployment rate is, you know, the unemployment rate uh, chosen by the, by the social planner. So what we can do is solve the social planner's problem. Once you solve the social planner's problem, you're going to, uh, basically, you're going to find your efficient unemployment rate. So let's do that. Uh, 